just getting into AAA services. Um, this was the exact slide that we we're on. Let me see if I can uh, pop over to it here. And uh, we're taking a look at uh, the overview of management access with AAA. AAA, of course, stands for uh, authentication, authorization, and accounting. Authentication is who you are. A lot of times we prove that with the username and password, uh, sometimes using a token or a digital certificate. Uh, additionally, we could use some type of biometrics. Once we know who you are, we then determine what you're allowed to do. That's our authorization process. Um, once upon a time, it was pretty straightforward. You know, we'd take a look at who the user is, and the user rights were fairly static. If you're an administrator, you had this level of rights. If you're not an administrator, you had this level of rights. It was fairly binary. You know, there were general employees, and you had your administration staff. What we're starting to see occur within the world of AAA is what we call dynamic authorization policies. What dynamic authorization policies refer to is, as you probably guessed from the title, the dynamic, let's see, interpretation of context. I, that might be a good way to put it. Uh, basically, we know who you are, but we want to know more information about you. Um, coming back to you guys, what do you know about AAA in terms of dynamic authorization? And a more direct way to ask that would be to say, okay, when someone's authenticating, you know, there's these servers out there, like the Identity Services Engine, or, you know, prior to that we had ACS. And what types of criteria could a AAA server look at to determine the level of authorization that you should receive? What types of attributes do you think it might consider? And the third A is accounting, that's just the logs of what you've done. Important, but not a lot to think about. It's logging is logging. We've got records. Uh, so Todd mentioned security groups. Uh, security groups are something that we can use, right? Security group ACLs uh, that were made uh, available with ICE, and that's more of an authorization response. So on the authorization response side, sure, uh, security groups, um, v, you know, dynamic VLAN assignment, dynamic ACL, whether or not we're going to do web redirect. But more specifically, I was asking about, you know, what types of things do we consider? See some more uh, answers coming in here. Who they are, where they're connecting from. That's good. Is it the headquarters? Is it a remote office? Uh, is it some foreign IP address? What type of device they're coming in on? Is it a tablet or, you know, some type of mobile platform? Or is it an actual laptop? Uh, the source of the connectivity, whether or not it's a known host, those are good. Um, other ones may include, you know, is this a corporate-owned as asset or is it something that we'd qualify as BYOD? With corporate assets, you have a concept called watermarking where we can look on the system for a particular process or uh, the existence of a file or a particular registry entry. And we'd say any corporate asset would have this particular key set in the registry. If that key is present, it's a corporate device. If it's not, it's non-corporate. Using criteria like the type of device, the ownership of the device, then we can start to get into the security posture. You know, what's happening with that device in terms of patch? Do they have antivirus, anti-spyware? Are the signatures up to date? Is the operating system patched? These are all things that we can determine. You know this is network admission control, but those are things that we can consider when determining the level of access that's going to be granted into our network environment. That's the real power of this. Uh, the idea of central sign-on or, or single sign-on and having a central uh, single repository such as Active Directory really isn't new, right? Um, what's significant about it is the consistent application of authentication practices across different types of medium. And that's where I said, you know, looking at the AnyConnect client, we can use that for wired and wireless access locally, and we can use advanced authentication types. Uh, such as EAP TLS, and we can do EAP chaining. EAP chaining allows us to authenticate both the server as well as the uh, as well or server, but uh, as well as uh, we could. Uh, better way to say it would be the machine. We can authenticate both the machine and say what is the machine trusted or not, as well as.